Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to be hosting a single page application in Amazon's AWS S3. For those of who are unfamiliar, uh, a single page application is an application or a web app which loads a single index HTML page, and then it dynamically updates that page without triggering whole page refreshes between different pages. Now I have an application up in this browser, it's written in Angular, and common frameworks used to make single page applications are frameworks like Angular, React, and you'll see a lot of view applications also in that single page format. They don't necessarily have to be, but it is a technique that is pretty common with these frameworks. So with this application, you can see that I'm on the home route, and if I click about, it instantly transitions to this about page and transitions back. If I refresh the page, it's gonna reload, but everything's pretty much going to be handled by the client. If I hit just slash, it's going to automatically redirect me to home. Now, if we quickly skim through the code, you can see that I have my single page application in the source code. We have a single index.html. We have the app root. This is where the application bootstraps and sort of expands into. The module will define our routes. We have anything going to the nothing route will take us to home. Home will take us to the home component. About will take us to the about component. Home component is here. We've got two links, home and about, which direct us using this router link to the different pages. Now each framework will do this slightly differently. Angular has its built-in router solution. React will have their React router. Vue will have its view routing solution, but ultimately it doesn't, it's sort of like this. But the implementation itself doesn't really matter. All we need to know is that a single index file is all that's needed. And then there's the associated uh, JavaScript files which come along with it. So in the case of Angular, you have to first build the application. So ng build dash dash prod. And what this will do is using Webpack and all those cool technologies, it'll compile and bundle all of my JavaScript into a single file and then create a folder, copy everything that needs to be into that folder and I get this one dist folder, which contains the complete contents of my application. So as it completes the build, we'll see that happen. Sweet, so we can see this dist folder has now been created. And if we go into the folder, we can see that we have a dist folder with my SPA. And within that, we have a single HTML file and then a bunch of JavaScript and CSS and all the cool things required for a page, for an application or for a website, really. But you can notice that there isn't a home.index. There isn't, sorry, there isn't a home.html or an about.html, just this index HTML, which gets loaded and then the JavaScript loads and then it figures things out from there. So let's get it up into S3. First of all, we're going to create a bucket. I'm going to call this Alsh David Edu dash my SPA. We'll create the bucket. And in this bucket, we'll hit upload, open up our files, copy all of these, drag them into the application, into the bucket. We'll upload that, have the upload complete. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and configure our website. So what you need to do is configure the static website hosting. We want to set the index document to index.html. For now, at least, I'll show you what happens when you don't fully complete the configuration. We have to set up the public rules to make sure that the bucket is accessible to the public and we have to configure our bucket policy, which we can get the S3 bucket bucket policy. Oops, <laughs> for a website. And we'll be able to find the default bucket policy, which we can just straight copy and paste into here. We'll need to replace the example bucket text with 
our bucket name, save this, it's all set up, our bucket should come up as public now, and we have this public indicator, and now our website, our service is public. If we go to the, the URL supplied by Amazon, that's not it. Let's just go ahead and copy this. Go to this link, it's gonna open up our application and cool, we're on home and about. So now my Angular application or my single page application is hosted. That's great. However, if I push refresh, it's gonna say file not found. And the reason for that is there is no about.html in my bucket. So if I look here, we can see there's no about, it's looking to find something like an about.html, but there's nothing here, there's only an index. And same goes for home. I did the same thing, nothing, but if I hit slash, just nothing, it's going to pick up the index and then it will serve the index and then we have the application. And from there, the application will take over and handle route changes as it's dynamically drawing the page from JavaScript. To fix this, we actually have to use the error document. It's a bit of a hack, but it's okay. You set the error document to index.html, hit save, and now when I refresh the page on about, it's gonna give me the about page and the same thing goes for home. So now when a file is not found, it's gonna automatically just serve the index file, which is what we want. We always want the index file to be the, the file that's served no matter what the route, unless there's an actual file there that you're trying to access. There is a caveat with this. It isn't ideal from the perspective of SEO. Now, if you hit the page, directly, we're going to see that in our network tab, we'll see the index file comes up as a status code 200. That's acceptable. That's good. That's what we want. But if we refresh the page on home, for example, it's going to come up as a 404 because the file isn't found. And what we're really doing is serving an error document. We're saying this is a 404, but here's the file that indicates that we want to show to the customer or the user that the page isn't found. This is a problem. You actually can't get around this with S3 directly. You actually have to add another service to the mix in order to facilitate for changing the status code. And I'll cover that in another video, but essentially what you want to use, I'll just boil it down. Um, you can use CloudFront in front of this and CloudFront can then mutate the request to make sure that the status code is 200. Alternatively, you can use something like Nginx or you can use Apache or something else. And then you can route and, can, and, and uh, modify the status codes from there. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you later.